the PlayStation 1 really was a great system. It introduced so many franchises to the world of gaming. Tomb Raider, Tony Hawk, Resident Evil, Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, Grand Theft Auto, Silent Hill, even existing franchises like Castlevania, Metal Gear, and Final Fantasy found new life with games still considered classics to this day. And the franchise we're talking about today not only launched eight individual games, but also launched an entire genre in gaming. Today we're looking at a history of Twisted Metal. Ah, Twisted Metal, vehicular combat at its finest. The brainchild of Dave Jaffe, who also helped create God of War, Twisted Metal was like a destruction derby with the dial turned all the way up to 11, and then turned up a few notches more, and then someone blows up the dial. Infused with more action than your body physically has room for, and with over-the-top characters with absurd stories, I'd argue that the Twisted Metal series is... how to put this... It's the most video gamey video game that has ever existed. But this series has a backstory that may surprise some people, not to mention deviations between games that are worth looking into. So let's explore the history of this amazing franchise, and while we're at it, maybe blow some stuff up too. We start in 1995, where developer Single Track and a team led by Dave Jaffe was tasked by Sony with creating a new game to show off the power of the PlayStation. They drew inspiration from an incident in which they were stuck in LA traffic and fantasized about blowing up the other cars. A perfectly reasonable response to LA traffic. And thus, an idea was born. Given only a year to work on it, they eventually released to the world their creation, Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal was amazing, high-impact, non-stop action. You pick your car, drive around levels picking up weapons and destroying your opponents, then move on to the next stage. Each car has different stats and special moves, and stages ranged from small arenas to massive suburbs. The first Twisted Metal set the standard for how the game would play. Sure, the physics and small details in future games were different, but the general gameplay stroke started here. Things like everyone's special weapon regenerating at different speeds, and some of the most common characters in the series all began here. Story mode involved you picking a car and going through every level, killing everyone to advance, but it's the actual details of the story mode that made Twisted Metal so fun. See, the Twisted Metal contest is run by a mysterious man named Calypso, who gathers these drivers with an alluring prize, a single wish, whatever their heart desires, regardless of cost or even reality. Calypso was a tall, long-haired, mysterious man in most of his appearances. Well, except in the first game, where he was a... uh, meatloaf clown. One of the greatest strengths of the Twisted Metal series is how over-the-top the characters are. Twisted Metal 1 alone features such characters as a ghost who wants to be alive again, a secret agent in pursuit of a mysterious black box, an army captain who wants to go back in time to change the outcome of a battle, and a police officer looking to end Twisted Metal once and for all. And of course, the signature character of the series, Needles Kane, aka Sweet Tooth, the most terrifying clown in gaming. Once you beat a character's story, they get their wish granted by Calypso. But as it turns out, he's a firm believer in the old adage, be careful what you wish for. So, spoiler alert, you know how Rogue Kittle wanted to go back to the day of a battle? He does, right into the middle of the battle where he is instantly shot and killed. But some of them do get exactly what they want. You never know if the character will be successful, get screwed, or have something else entirely different happen. And while the text crawls might not be the most satisfying ending, there's a reason for that. The game originally featured live-action FMVs for each ending, but were deemed too offensive and cut. Huh, what was offensive about them? Where are you going? No! <laughs> what are you doing with <laughs> that? Ah! No, 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 I get it, I get it. That's totally offensive to whatever the hell is going on there. Twisted Metal was a big success for Single Track. Between it and the game they developed alongside it, Warhawk, they sold over half a million copies and generated nearly 30 million in revenue. And so naturally, a sequel was put into production. Twisted Metal 2 hit the market in October of 1996. And this is where, in some ways, the series truly hit its peak. While the original game gave the world a glimpse into what vehicular combat could be, Twisted Metal 2 pushed everything further. The game had a whole different look to it. Rather than the slightly realistic approach of the first one, Twisted Metal 2 was more cartoonish. The levels were larger and more varied, with creative twists such as Antarctica's slowly shrinking map, or Amazonia's use of lava. The character roster was expanded as well, with a lot more unique and fun characters, all competing for their heart's desire. From insane engineers like Simon Whittlebone and Mr. Slam seeking to build the world's largest tower, to Axel, a man trapped in a giant wheel vehicle who wants to confront the man who put him there. 
Each character had more creative and distinct special moves, and the weapons you could pick up were more varied as well. The gameplay was a bit floatier, which added to the cartoonish vibe the game had, and that's the key. Each Twisted Metal game has its own style, and while the first often felt like a B-movie, the characters, graphics, and cutscenes of two make it feel like a living comic book. And the cutscenes and voice acting really make the game. The opening cutscene alone is one of the most memorable of my childhood. No one will be safe. I promise you that. This time, the endings really play up Calypso's madness. Some characters, such as Axel, get exactly what they want, but others, not so much. Take Mike and Stu, two clueless teens who drive the monster truck Hammerhead. Their dream is to fly, so when they ask for it, Calypso readily grants it to them, whereupon they leap off a building and plummet to their deaths. Good thing these first-class tickets are refundable. Oh, Calypso, you're just a, you're just a bastard. Twisted Metal 2 was a huge hit for single track as well, selling enough to be a greatest hits game. Everyone was eagerly anticipating the next one, but this is where things get a bit complex. There was a contractual dispute between single track and Sony, stemming from single track being purchased by GT Interactive, and so they lost the rights to the Twisted Metal name. Sony handed those rights to an in-house developer, 989 Studios. While they had the rights to the name, they didn't own any of the code, nor did they own any of the talent who worked on the game. So they had to start from scratch, and in 1998, Twisted Metal 3 was released to the world. Now under an entirely new company, Twisted Metal 3 looked to show that the series could still provide the same level of fun under an entirely new banner. And in some ways it does. The gameplay is still there, driving around and destroying the competition feels as fun as ever. There are a lot of creative weapons and some pretty clever level designs that reward exploration and feature secrets. But the gameplay didn't feel as fluid as Twisted Metal 2, as the fun floatiness was now very stiff. Turning around in the heat of battle isn't as easy as it once was. Perhaps they wanted to inject a little realism into the game? I would imagine turning around in that scenario would be pretty difficult. Although I've never tried it before. Hmm. Eh, better not. But overall, the gameplay was still alright. The real question was the tone of the game, and that's where we run into a problem. See, the tone of the game had shifted greatly. The B-movie feel of the first and the comic book feel of the second gave way to a rather generic action game feel. Not bad, but rather disappointing compared to the rest. The big issue I have is with the characters and endings. The first two games featured characters competing in the tournament for their greatest desires, no matter the cost. But Twisted Metal 3? Everything feels tongue-in-cheek, self-aware, and comedic. And not in a good way. Not to mention, none of the endings felt satisfying. In the first two games, you never knew what was going to happen, whether the character would get exactly what they want, or Calypso would take the chance to screw them over. But every single ending in Twisted Metal 3 is comedic, with Calypso just doing whatever he wants. Club Kid says he wants to party all night, so Calypso makes him party in Alaska, where night lasts eight months. And Firestarter wants to have a barbecue with his friends, so Calypso makes him the meal. That kind of thing. It was an alright game, but not up to the standards of Twisted Metal 1 and 2. But 989 Studios took another crack at the series with Twisted Metal 4. And it was, uh, interesting. All the problems that Twisted Metal 3 had were amplified here. The controls and physics had been improved a bit, but still weren't great. But the real problem was the tone. None of the characters were memorable, instead just all feeling generic and wacky, making the whole thing an unfunny comedy game. No motivations were actually interesting, a plotline about Sweet Tooth overthrowing Calypso and Calypso himself becoming playable doesn't really end in a good way. In fact, nobody's ending is satisfactory. So while the game does play a little better, there really isn't that much to talk about, because the tone is so unmemorable. It was just disappointing. Even with the addition of multiple unlockable boss characters, create a car mode, and a few unique car designs, the game is just distinctly uninteresting. Well, apart from the horrifying cutscenes. God, who did that animation? Seriously, there's nothing else to even talk about with Twisted Metal 4. It's just Twisted Metal 3, but worse. Meanwhile, Single Track was using the engine to take vehicular combat in fun, new directions. There was Rogue Trip Vacation 2012, with cartoonish graphics, gameplay that involved escorting tourists to post-apocalyptic photo ops, and had a soundtrack by ska band The Mighty Mighty Boss And there was Critical Depth, which took the concept under seas with submarine combat, and actual level objectives rather than just kill everybody. So the Twisted Metal name felt kinda dead at that point, but there was hope. Incognito Entertainment was founded in 1999 from the ashes of Single Track, including the original mind behind Twisted Metal, Dave Jaffe, 
and in 2001, they got the rights to the Twisted Metal franchise back to create a new game for the PlayStation 2. The question was, could they recapture the magic again? Could they bring Twisted Metal back to what it once was? Could they strike gold? Well, they didn't strike gold. They struck black. Twisted Metal Black is in many ways the best Twisted Metal game ever made. The tone took an entirely new direction. Ignoring Twisted Metals 3 and 4, it took the franchise dark into a psychological horror game. Long gone was any semblance of comedy characters. Now everyone had been recast as traumatized, all in a mental institution for different reasons. An insane preacher possessed by a demon, a cop living in agony with a mistake he made years ago, a former boxer with his eyes and mouth sewn shut out for revenge, a scorned bride with a murderous streak out to find her true love, the game was actually really creepy. You play through their stories with only a basic idea of who they are to start, and after beating the halfway boss you find out the nature of their twisted psyche and what made them the way they are, and then get to their ending to see how, or even if, they can get the redemption that they seek. Calypso, now rocking a bald head and battle scar, isn't nearly as vindictive as he once was, and he doesn't need to be. The characters themselves provide more than enough intrigue to sell the game itself. Even the special moves feel darker. The returning dark side, now driven by a woman trapped in a doll mask, simply speeds up to ram the opponent, while Brimstone launches a deranged kamikaze follower who latches onto other cars and detonates. The levels match the new tone, feeling more realistic and yet terrifyingly imposing, between abandoned drive-in theaters, twisting highways, and sprawling suburbs. And the controls were tight and easy to use, making it one of the most accessible games in the Twisted Metal series. It was a risk to take the series in such a dark direction, but one that paid off. Twisted Metal Black is one of the top 100 best-selling PS2 games of all time, and it got universal acclaim. And it's one of the strongest games in the PlayStation 2 lineup, and holds up to this day. And to balance how serious this part of the video has been, here's another cutscene from the first Twisted Metal game. Between 2001 and 2012, there were two other Twisted Metal games, although they're not as interesting to talk about. Twisted Metal Small Brawl recast the characters as kids playing with RC cars, and was the final Twisted Metal game released for the original PlayStation. Certainly a fun little idea, but didn't really do much with the franchise, and was met with negative reception. Meanwhile, on the PSP, we got Twisted Metal Head On, a direct sequel to Twisted Metal 2's story that combined the gameplay and style of Black with the cutscenes and overall tone of Twisted Metal 2 and added some fun in-engine minigames. It was a good game. In fact, it was a great game. I still play this one on occasion. It's a blast. The only problem is that it was on the PSP for years before quietly being ported to PlayStation 2. So while it is a really fun game, it was sadly the biggest victim of circumstance in the series. But back to the mainline Twisted Metal games, there's one more to talk about. Because after being dormant for years and years, a new company called Eat Sleep Play, founded from the ashes of Incognito Entertainment, released a reboot to the series on PlayStation 3. And this time, it was simply named Twisted Metal. Gameplay was fantastic. The game added in some new game mechanics and modes while still maintaining the feel of Twisted Metal. There was a wide variety of cars with fun special weapons to pick from, and the game now had a significant multiplayer focus, which had always been a draw to the series but now felt like it was front and center. The game's tone had once again shifted, now it felt like a grim and gritty grindhouse movie, while not being as dark as Twisted Metal Black. The setting was ominous, almost apocalyptic, but remained so over the top that the game could get away with things like giant lava pits and truly absurd boss fights, including Sweet Tooth's Carnival of Carnage, featuring a titanic robot fight that culminates in a helicopter dogfight with clown mechs. Good times. Twisted Metal should have been the perfect game for the series. Unfortunately, there was one major drawback. You see, there were a large number of cars to choose from, but only three actual characters. Dollface, Mr. Grimm, and Sweet Tooth. You could pick which car you drive, but there were only those three stories. So for as over the top and great the game felt, with the shiny new graphics and live action cutscenes making the most of the PS3 hardware, it somehow felt lacking compared to the wide variety of characters from previous games. Even though the stories were well done and certainly intriguing enough to make you want to play through them, every story could be completed in a total of a few hours, leaving most fans, myself included, rather disappointed. But while it was missing a key component that made the series so wonderful, the tone and gameplay was still great, making it a worthy addition to the Twisted Metal franchise. That was the last Twisted Metal game to be released, and it's been seven years since it came out. 
But who knows? Maybe one day there'll be more. And going back, replaying every single game in the series, I realized something. Twisted Metal is awesome! For a series spanning so many games, it always hit a certain level of quality in the gameplay. Maybe 3 and 4 screwed up the story. Maybe Small Brawl took it too far with the comedy. Maybe the reboot didn't have the characters. But apart from some stiffness and awkwardness in a few of them, every game was so much fun to play. But Twisted Metal was about more than just gameplay. Each game took the series in a new direction with the story, the tone, the graphics, the characters, and while some were misses, most of them were absolute hits. Whether it was a B-movie, a comic book, a horror, or a grindhouse, Twisted Metal managed to keep its core intact while playing around with tweaks on its genre. Heck, I'll even admit that 3 and 4 had some enjoyable stuff in them. Twisted Metal Black overall still holds up as the best game in the series. For the graphics, the gameplay, the story, just everything came together. But on a personal level, Twisted Metal 2 will always be my favorite. It was the first game I ever owned on PlayStation, and I personally believe that the comic book style suited Twisted Metal the absolute best out of any of them. Plus those cutscenes. Oh, that's the good stuff. I'll always love the Twisted Metal series. I'm such a dork for it that I even met Dave Jaffe at PAX and got him to sign a Sweet Tooth mask, which I proudly hang on my wall. Wait, is that creepy? Now that I'm saying it out loud, it sounds creepy. It's nice to go back to a series and see that, even with a few hiccups, it's held up quite well over the years. Each Twisted Metal game brings something unique to the table, and they're worth playing nowadays, especially Twisted Metal Black, which I personally think has held up the best. So if this series has passed you by, it's worth jumping into. You can really never get enough vehicular combat in your life. Oh fine, one more. You don't know what it was like for me, you just... And we just and I, and you, and them, you don't know! Ha, <laughs> I, I could watch those all day. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, as there are two new videos every week from my other series, Dollar Store Gaming every Monday and Game Boy Roulette every Friday, as well as other special videos like this one. Thanks again, I'm Brian J, and I'll see you next time.